in no other writer of contemporary we find such an intensity such a volume and such a passion as that in the case of bhairappa that really marks that here is a writer for whom our culture and our languages were baby there is a saying in sanskrit apimam pavayet sadvi snatve ichchati chanavi even the great ganga the river wants to have some person some pious person by whose dip her waters will be sanctified one or the other sadhvi they always ready to come and would the sanctify ganga if at all we want to cleanse ganga sadhvis satis they have to take dip in ganga like that a language to wait someone should come and resurrect us to yes eliot says if one master writer appears in a language for 200 years or so the language will become barren because all the essence of that language would be exploited by the writer so efficiently that i have seen in kannada in the case of poetry immediately i remember kuvempu in the case of prose immediately i have to remember that place self irappa when kalidas wrote in sanskrit even today his as fresh as a rose which has blossomed this morning this morning also i was contemplating on kalidasa i was feeling bad on my own writing this fellow who at least existed before 1500 years still haunts me still dodges me still makes me frustrated that should be the capability of a writer and here is such a writer it's not just because of playing that vibration we eulogize him i critically evaluate perhaps i am one of the caustic critics of bhairappa i have conducted study circles i have conducted many workshops on his writings there i have pointed why not just in his absence even in his presence i am fortunate enough to receive his novels before publication for a review at the level of draft itself even at that stage i have given my honest and frank <laughs> feedback he is so generous and as not to discard them he never defends his writing the writing itself should defend and the author should never do any such thing that is his policy and because of that whatever i speak it's very critical in the real sense if what are it appears to be a eulogizing appreciation then the blame has to go to its merit and not to me <laughs> Well, uh, I have been given the task of uh, approaching his work through the perspective of Indian aesthetics. Once for a month, month-long lectures I gave on the novels of Bhairappa. Every day, one and a half to two hours. Even then, I couldn't exhaust. <laughs> I often think he has already written 25 novels. I don't know how many are still waiting in his mind. every novel at least and on average needs four books for critical evaluation appreciation and bringing out the nuances of the novel in that sense at least 100 books are needed to appreciate bhairappa in an agreeable manner to get a amount of satisfaction at least we need 100 serious books on his novels and that being the case i am not even allotted with 100 minutes <laughs> what to say about <laughs> let me do whatever just is possible because we know there is a proverb in kannada sukshma dali moksha in a minuscule we can complete the things my esteemed colleague and friend shri ajakala girish bhatt ji he introduced very effectively the writings of bhairappa and he too would have found it a frustrating experience to introduce uh, such a great uh, authors manifolded writings uh, rich in both volume rich in quality and content in a brief period of time but what to do we have to but my work has been simplified because of uh, girish i am very much uh, beholden to him for this kind help well indian aesthetics is essentially based on experience there are many theories england is known for such theories in oxford and cambridge people like f r lewis and people like uh, um, 
A.C. Bradley and many such writers, even before a century, they started developing various theories. And Europe is home city for homeland of so many such theories. But many times, these theories, they end up with the propounders themselves. When the professor retires, the theories also <laughs> go worn out. When the students complete PhDs, then the theories become obsolete. It has become published or finished. For that case, uh, it is the problem of such an existential difficulty. Many such theories take their birth and they die. The natural death obviously happens. But Indian aesthetics is not so. By saying so, I am not denigrating the Western aesthetics. Because having the good fortune of reading Aristotle or Longinus or even Plato and even Horace in original Greek and Latin, I feel the classical Western aesthetics is no way different from Indian aesthetics in spirit. In form here and there, there may be variations. But if you look into the concept of uh, sublimity of Longinus or the concept of tragedy in Aristotle, they are no way different from the concepts of uh, Rasa, Dhvani, Auchitya, of uh, Abhinavgupta, Anandabhartana, Bharata, Akshayavendra and many more. Please bear with me when I drop such names, big names, not to just show off my petty knowledge, just to assure you that I am not relying on my small mind. The whole tradition of masters who existed since two millennia at least, they are with me. And that's why the whole tradition speaks. When Bhairapaji is writing, he is not just speaking as an individual. Though incidentally has become the author of the works, the volume of Indian tradition, Indian ethos and Indian life is speaking and anything which is truly Indian is essentially universal in nature. And that is the wonder of Indian culture. If you say anything which is fundamentally Indian, that is, that must be, and that's obviously universal. In that sense, Indianness is only an expression of universality. In that sense, Bhairappa, when he's speaking, when he's writing, he is speaking through the voice of Vyasa, speaking through the voice of, uh, voice of Kalidasa, speaking through the voice of Kumar Vyasa, speaking through the voice of uh, Kritivasa, speaking through the voice of Nanaya Bhattaraka, speaking through the voice of uh, Kamban, and many such poets, many such writers. And Indian aesthetics essentially relies on experience, and that is universal in nature. And that experience is art experience. Uh, Professor M. Hiriyana, a great philosopher and aesthetician of Karnataka, and even today his works are respected. Before 100 years, he wrote so many of his articles, but they are even today relevant, and they will be relevant even after several decades and even several centuries. And he was Paramaguru of S.L. Bhairappa. Bhairappa's mentor in philosophy was Professor Yamanacharya, and Yamanacharya's direct guru, master was Professor Hiriyanda. And Hiriyanda wrote extensively about values and Bhairappa also taught about values. And his special interest is values. And what we see in his writings is the synthesis and analysis of values through the perspective of R as a value. Values, studying values. It always happens, one lamp writing the other lamp. And both the lamps will be sharing the same light, but no way the light will be diminished, it will be multiplied. Well, in Indian in aesthetics, art is a value, and Professor M. Hirina defines that which he is pursued for its own sake is a value, and value is experience. While well, facts are comprehended, values are experienced. Hence, one has to read Bhairappa, one has to feel Bhairappa as an art, artist and his works as art piece, then only we will be appreciating it. With this in my mind, I assume that many of you here would have read his novels, at least in translations, and that's why my work will be simpler, because it will be very difficult to explain the background and then connect to the theories. I take it for granted that you all know at least a few novels Many of you would have read all his novels, but uh, at least uh, many of you would have read a few major novels of him. In that background, I try to 
to do some justice to the given topic. Rasa is the most fundamental concept of Indian aesthetics. Unfortunately, in contemporary India, this is the most abused and most rejected and most contentiously seen term. But Indian tradition and universal experience is always for Rasa. We can refer to Anand Kumar Swami, who was a great source of inspiration to Dr. Bhairavka. Rasa is that art experience which can be defined as contemplative and compassionate feeling of our own experiences. Observing our own experiences with compassion, with a sense of detachment, compassionately looking at experience, looking at our emotions, become rasa. Rasyate iti rasa or rasanam rasa. That is the expansion, that is the definition of it. Bhairappa often and often in his speeches, in his writings, critical writings, he has told, I am very much obedient to rasa, I am committed to rasa. And that rasa is detached enjoyment. In the material enjoyment, enjoyment will always be attached to things. But in aesthetic enjoyment, detachment fosters a lot of enjoyment. This is what he often speaks. And that is very much true to Indian tradition of rasa. Sattva dreka dakhanda prakashananda chinmayaha sparsha vedyantara sparsha shunyaha Like that Vishwanatha says in Sahitya Darpana it is the exalted existence of our own existence, Sattva Dreka. Our own existence in an exalted manner, when it appears, it is Sattva Dreka, Akhanda. It is undivided, it is unified. And Rasa has no enemy. In that, at that level, it is non-violence, it is highly non-violent, and it has no enmity, and that is the beauty of Rasa. If we take literature as a tool for propagating our agenda, it will be very violent, it will be very harsh, it will be very intolerant. But when once a person commits himself or herself for this rasa, no amount of intolerance will be felt. In that sense, rasa is the universal friend, irrespective of caste, creed, gender, race, nationality, and any such discriminations and any such distinctions. And then this rasa, can never be directly expressed. Rasa can only be expressed in an indirect manner because Rasa is not an explanation, it is a realization. Explanation is explicit in nature, while realization is implicit. In an oblique way, it has to be told. Uh, Girishji mentioned one line from Kabulu, one of his recent works. When Yula was flying high, she was flying on the deserts. Then her thoughts came. Means her mind is also barren. That is the suggestion. Through the suggestion, her mental status is appreciated, is enjoyed. Enjoyed means it's not in the worldly sense. Feeling itself is enjoyment. Knowing and enjoying are no two different things. That is the basis of Indian aesthetics. I have many such passages from. Professor Bhairappa's works, I don't want to read and uh, take much of time there, but this much I can say. Dhvani, suggestion is the failure that succeeds. The expression becomes so uh, clear and beautiful that it will be deliberately expressing its inability to express. And the beauty of inability becomes success. Uh, there is a famous poem in English, Water saw her lard and blushed. When Christ transformed water into wine, the poet says that in an oblique manner, water saw her lord. Here water has been attributed feminine gender, water saw her lord. It's against English grammar in the conventional sense. And it blushed. Water cannot blush because water has no uh, emotional existence. That is also attributed to that. Blushing means cheeks becoming red. And water turned to wine. The change can, be on, can only be seen through the eye, and that change is in the form of color, from colorlessness to reddish color. And that's so the change, water becoming wine, the miracle of Christ, has been suggested. Likewise, suggestion is such a beautiful embellishment, it will directly connect to the emotions. Here, the poet never said water 
became vain but is saying without expression so this way of failure of language effectively brought out in expression becomes dhvani lot of such uh, instances can be seen in bhairava in his uh, famed novel mandra uh, one of the main characters madhumita goes to her teacher's place and presses the button of the lift elevator immediately it goes to the seventh one ಷಡ್ಜದಿಂದ ಷಡ್ಜಕ್ಕೆ ಮೀಂಡ್ ಹೊಡೆದಂತೆ ಒಂದೇ ಬಾರಿಗೆ ಏಳನೇ ಮಹಡಿಗೆ ಬಂದಿತ್ತು ಲೆಗ್ಗತ್ತಿ ರೈಟರ್ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಲೋಯರ್ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ನೋಟ್ ಷಡ್ಜ ಸ ಟು ದಿ ಹೈಯರ್ ಒನ್ ಹೌ ದ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ರೈಸಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಲಿಫ್ಟ್ ಮೂಡ್ ದ ನಾವಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಹರ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಫರ್ ಆನ್ ಜಂಪ್ಸ್ ಶಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಚಾಲೆಂಜ್ ಅ ಟೀಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ and her musical challenge is very beautifully suggested to the elevator boy from the first floor itself directly to the seventh floor if somebody had pressed in between in the meantime the buttons of the lift in the other floors it would have stopped nobody is pressed by that time immediately it rises means unchecked voice rises the rise of voice is a suggestion to her opposition to the teacher all such suggestions i can speak for 5 10 minutes about this line itself then many myriad in nature and then not only in one line not only in one character not only in one passage the whole novel becomes a suggestion his uh, classic vamsha vriksha wrote uh, it was written before 55 years or so in vamsha vriksha it is a, an internal quest of belongingness to whom we belong to our blood relationship is it a value by itself ultimately our relation should become emotional the emotional connectivity is the real connectivity not the physical not the biological connectivity there one professor will be studying indian culture and writing five volumes along with the help of another lady from sri lanka and he writes and he thinks that those five volumes are is very children his real santana his real progeny is that but at the same time his first wife's son prithvi was a science graduate was pursuing science he is also his son that is the biological progeny this is intellectual progeny and here is biological progeny and his father dies and goes to father's second wife intellectual companion karuna ratne and she says prithvi i am living for sri lanka to my mother motherland you look at your father's works you have to read it i am a science student very coldly he replies means the real biological progeny is no way interested in uh, the emotional and intellectual progeny of his father he never treats that as his younger brother from where is the connectivity between this son and that production of intellectual and emotional endeavor in that way those who are really bothered about it they become the biological progeny they become the real uh, uh, real heirs of that prosperity in that sense anyone who feels for india is an indian by passport by electoral policy one need not be a citizen of india in that way our tradition says wherever you have that feel you become that dehabhimane galite yatra yatra mano yati tatra tatra samadaya it is said so in that way the whole novel becomes a profound metaphor and another irony is a pious character like shrinivas shotriya appears a pious and erudite scholarly character very noble soul he is very much interested to see that his lineage scholarly lineage is maintained intact his son 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 like that should go and no child is an independent entity everyone belong to the lineage like that but ultimately he counts for his dismay for his mental and emotional disaster that he himself is not belonging to that lineage he is a bastard to speak the reality he is an illegitimate child then he feels shocked when i am not belonging to this family this lineage what is the meaning of life but then he realizes whatever i got through this birth through this family that is not false 
my birth may be a false my background may be falsehood it may be adultery but the samskara the cultural seasoning what i got it is my real value like that he realizes and that realization is not directly written by the writer it is suggested that's why he never feels bad he never never goes mad he receives all these shocks calmly after while those shocked and annoyed for that moment he immediately comes out that comes out of that and becomes more compassionate more enriched and more broad based in that sense when we see this is the real samskara this is the real nomishaksha this is the real spirit of inheritance we speak so much about inheritance and here is the real inheritance those who mind and those who care and those who bother to them they belong to yamai vesh agrana te te ne malabhya this is the message of the veda and a great testimony of that is found in 400 pages of big novel umshavaksha and this he wrote with a span of one month when he was hardly 28 in one summer holiday vacation he wrote we can't even imagine even today i feel that novel is a complete art piece spotless art piece no one can question any line of it to that extent learning wisdom and genius everything imagination they have all amalgamated so well and that he wrote when he was not even 28 and that made him the novelist he was in a fix whether to pursue philosophy or whether to pursue literature He was not much satisfied with the philosophical researches because you see how much commitment for experience was in the heart of Bhairappa. If apart from spinning theories after theory, as a philosophy professor, I cannot do anything. Philosophy should become life. To realize the values of life, I have to be a philosopher, and for that, our universities and our academia are no way helpful. let me become a creative writer through the tool of creative writing i shall experience that i shall realize it this is the motto even today it stands alive even today it stands intact this is how our indian tradition our poets and our scholars have done it so ham ajanm shuddha nam aphalode karmana ma samudrakshiti sha nam anakar tapatmana like that kalidas says to realize this value in raghuvamsha i am composing it tam santa shrotmarhanti sad sad dikti hetavah hev laksham lakshate shudne agno vishuddhi shamika piva i am submitting my work like a piece of gold in the heart kilns of sagradayas let them examine let their intellectual fire examine the gold my writing uh, as pure or impure let them decide and give the judgment this space submitting one's experience in an artistic medium and giving it for the consideration of sahardayas rasikas the real connoisseurs is the approach of indian art and that bhairava is doing and indian aesthetics often and often emphasizes on three factors of a creative writer pratibha vyutpatti and abhyasa pratibha is inborn imaginative power it's very very important naisarji ki pratibha no one can infuse that no one can inject it and vyutpatti is erudition and abhyasa is practice many writers they may be gifted as far as pratibha is concerned but they don't enrich bhairava has many times told if we rely on our own experiences our own life experiences of childhood or youthhood then we exhaust it very easily in the first or second novel itself all our experience will be complete saturated and will become bankrupt as far as experience is concerned that's why we have to gain experience we have to move around we have to interact we have to read we have to feel and we have to experience in that sense indian institutions have given hundreds of rules hundreds of prescriptions kshemendra before 1000 years a devout student of abhinav gupta a multi faceted scholar polymath and polyglot of kashmir he says a creative writer should have at least 100 qualifications there are one such qualifications how minutely our indian institutions go to just show it i am tempted to say this smashan aranya darshanam a creative writer should deeply move around should roam around 
the cemeteries, the burial yards, and even the forests. Bhairappa, at his tender age of 10 or 12, witnessed death, two deaths on the very same day, his elder brother and elder sister. And then immediately his mother, and when he was not even a lad of 11 or 12, he lost his younger brother. The body was carried on his shoulders as nobody was there to help. He went to the cemetery and there he cremated such a tender aged boy experiencing all these things. What it would mean? Often it is said, death and scene are the two great lofty features that haunt a creative writer. Sometimes even uh, the passion of sex is also added. So these are very important uh, features that a writer should touch upon, writer should examine. Bhairappa intensely felt death. And by studying philosophy, he says, I wanted to understand death. Recently also I had one, I once asked him, what do you think about death? You are already a nano -gerrain. Then he says, I'm very much curious to know. I don't have fear of death. But I'm very curious to know death. <laughs> if a person at this ripe age and uh, so much of limelight flooding on him, he is a man of wisdom and uh, con contemplation that wants to examine death. <laughs> what a courage. This saintly courage is what is needed for a writer in Indian aesthetics. That's why it is said, non rishik kurute kavyam. A non seer cannot attempt a great work of art. And then it is abhyasa. Practice is very, very important. Bhairappa patiently, meticulously writes pages after pages. Every letter he writes, he cannot dictate. In solitude he writes. He says it is a very painful experience. One has to pour out one's own self. To an extent he involves that without writing he would become mad. One of his magnum opus works, Parva, was written in that condition. No uh, vacation was available, all the earned leaves were exhausted, and leave without salary was also attempted. Then he thought, without writing I will die. That's why, let me resign, then do it. He had no other source of income, he had to manage his family, two children, everything was there. But it is such a great internal drive, he did it like that. And so, he writes several times. I myself have seen many times he changes his drafts. Some of them, the whole novel would be rewritten two or three times. This way of abhyasa. And abhyasa, even in verse also, in choicey verse, how they have to be written, in what way they have to be written, is a very conscious artist. In that sense, Indian instead becomes a mirror to the writings of Bhairappa. Then, variety. Sheer variety, in my limited knowledge, uh, I have a working knowledge of several Indian languages, whether it is Kannada or Telugu or Tamil or Hindi or to an extent uh, Marathi, all these languages I know. And many of the translations of Bhairappa also I have read in the same languages, the respective languages. But uh, in no other language, we find a writer who has created so many characters, so many characters. In Indian tradition, after Vyasa, I have not come across so profound thoughts. To write a profound plot is very difficult. Bharata says, Itivrittam tu kavyasya, nakyasya, shariram parikirtitam. Itivritta, a plot, is the real body of a work of art. She has created so many itivritta, so many themes. That is amazing. So many issues they come, but it will not end up as an issue. It will become a life examination. And then, characters. Many, many characters. I will be completing my talk with one instance. Just, you take mother. There are so many types of mothers. Mother is herself becoming goddess. Like such mothers are there. And mother, coming in the way of children, they are also present. And mothers, having so much of a blind attachment for children. His epic novel, comparable to Mahabharata of modern times, India in the period of emergency, that has been Tantu, thousand pages novel. In Tantu, Kanti is one mother. Her son extracts all that is needed for his life. 
from her. And then ditches and go to, goes to Avinka. Even after that, the mother gives away all the property, makes her son her himself as nominee for his, uh, her property. But this is Kanti, a liberated woman of Delhi. She does so. But in another novel, Kabbalini Nadi Magane, in the complete rural background of India, the novel goes on. And there, one born uh, dump lady, Tayava, she is illiterate. And she realizes that her son is not for the value of soil. Her son is not committed to the spirit of the soil. Then she rejects her son. And including her uh, cherished property of cows, everything she gives away as dana, as charity to Venkatramana. In that sense, here we have another extreme Tayoga. In the novel, Tayoga is a dumb lady. She can listen to everything. She is not deaf, but she is dumb. And the author says, for a special reason, I have made dumb and not deaf. I have seen such cases also, that's why I have written like that. So he gives an explanation also in the beginning. What it indicates, Tayoga is very easily understood by all the people in the village. All the villagers can understand her, can understand her gesture language, can understand her emotions and articulation, but her own son cannot understand. Our educated Indians are unable to understand India. That is the irony, that is the calamity, that has been wonderfully suggested, that is Prabhanda Dhvani. Of Ananda Vardhana of 9th century AD, he gives many varieties of Dhvani, Prakarana Dhvani, a suggestion in one episode, Prakarana Dhvani is one episode, but Prabhanda Dhvani is the voice, is the suggested voice of the whole work of art. All that he gives, uh, Bhairappa gives in his novels, and Tayapa becoming uh, a deaf and dumb woman for Kalinga, his son, is a Prabhanda Dhvani. Well, coming back to the characters of mother, one daughter will be there in Nirakarana. Nirakarana is rejection, rejection of life. A, boy, a person by name Narahari wants to pursue philosophy and rejects her, uh, his family. His wife was no more. She dies in one pregnancy and the children will be there, five children will be there. He gives them for adoption and he goes to Himalaya. It is a classic example of uh, uh, Isha was the Upanishad's message. Uh, Abhidhya Mrityum Tirtva Vidhya Amrita Mashtrute Andham Tamah Pravishanti Yavidhya Mupasate Those who want to pursue only knowledge, only external, only eternal knowledge, without fulfilling their worldly needs and worldly demands, they end up in darkness. Bhuyayva Andham Tamah Pravishanti, like that the Upanishad says. And that is the classic example who is rejecting it. In the Chandogya Upanishad, it is said, Anirakarana Vastu, Anirakarana Mestu. Let us, uh, I shall not reject anything and let the world not reject me. He wants to reject the world and so the world itself rejects him and the world of spirit also rejects him. He goes to Himalayas and then comes back as a failure, as a dapur sannyasi. He wants to become another Baramasi Maharaj. Baramasi Maharaj is one saint who stays on the snow-clad peaks of Himalaya in all the 365 days. For all 12 months, Baramas, he stays on the peaks of Himalaya. And such a yogi is Baramasi Maharaj. He wants to become that and goes there. And for six months he was there in Kedar. But what? Covering his body with rajai and eating potato. Boiled potato, nothing else. <laughs> Means he rejected this world and that world also rejected. When he comes back, his daughter Bhavani had been orphaned because, because of him. She says, you gave away us five children as for adoption, but if mother were to be there and you were not there, would she, have, would she do such thing? No, she will not. In that way, he says, the, the writer says, mother at any cost will not leave her children. She will go beg, borrow, or steal her, anything will do, and then see to it that her children are protected. Such a mother, non-existent mother's character has been profoundly suggested through the character of daughter. Like that, we have a number of mothers. 
and any number of fathers. For the sake of son, father um, craving and father screaming and father doing all sorts of difficult things we see in several novels, including Yasa of Parva, or uh, even in Nai Nehru and so and so many other novels. But at the same time, Bhairappa's autobiographical novel, there his own father, Lingarnaya in real life and Chenigraya in the novel, not at all bothered about the children. Not at all bothered about anything regarding family. When his own son is going away with a monk, the father was chewing pan. He wants to ask whether uh, his son is going far away with him forever or not. But as he was chewing pan, he never wanted to spit out. Just now he had taken that pan and that's why he never wanted to waste. Let me anywhere once he comes. Till then let me chew the pan. The novel ends there. For a wife, the father is not even bothered about the fate of his son, the only son. This he could write. And that uh, novel's uh, theme, as it is being his own life, he wanted to write in the early stage itself, but he could not. He made several attempts, then he stops. Only as an eighth novel he writes, in the preface he writes, I attempted this theme several times, but I didn't, because unless I developed a sort of aesthetic detachment, what is called a psychic distance to the content of the novel, I should not attempt. Then I will be abusing the theme, I will be, I'll be personally indulging, and I will be badly influencing the characters, and my biases should not spoil Rasa. So he developed such a sense of detachment and then he wrote. And that's why Bhairav Bhai, 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 Bhai has become a classic. Even his caustic critics have heralded that as one of his writings, one of the best writings of him. Like that, in Indian aesthetics it is said, though one's own experience, it has to be distanced. It has to be seen. It has to be seen from a distance. And that's why uh, our writers, including Kalidasa, they say, unless we become our own observers, we should not attempt. Vichitra bhava dharmamsha tattva prakhyacha darshanam. In that sense, uh, Vinogutta's mentor Bhattakota says, real vision is what which unifies all scattered aspects of life. When a poet becomes a seer, then it will happen. And then only such a vision will reveal newer and newer charms of linguistic beauties and that will become work of art. In that way, if at all anyone has doubts regarding the practicality, regarding the usefulness and relevance of canons of Indian aesthetics like Rasa, Dhani, Auchitya, Vakrakti, Alankara and other things, here I show that I sell Bhairappa is there. It is much more knowledge to me. Because a theory will become relevant only in practice. In the Vedantic tradition of uh, Advaita, it is said, what is the validation for Advaita? It is the life of Jeevan Mukta, a Ramana Marshi, a Sri Ramakrishna, a Vivekananda, a Ananda. Such people, they become evidences and such people, they become endorsements to the spiritual experience expounded in the Upanishads. And in that sense, Bharata, Abhinavukta, Ananda Vardhana, Kuntaka and many more, they find reassurance in Bhairappa. Thank you.